And I feel like most people just don't recognize this. Like this business is just math, okay? Yeah. Find the math that matters and just focus on the inputs. Don't focus <laughs> on anything else and watch where you end up. Right. So A, have you seen that? And B, what do you think are the inputs people should be paying attention to? Yeah, that's a great question. Number one, have I seen it? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think the biggest issue most land investors have is they don't do enough of the inputs, mm -hmm. right? It's it's a sheer input output uh, math equation that's a gap where it's like, I made two offers this week and I'm not getting any deals, dude. Uh, I remember getting one message that was like, hey man, I've been watching tons of YouTube videos and I, I don't have any deals. Yeah. And I was like, one doesn't equal the other, brother. What do you mean, right? So uh, that's piece number one. Piece number two would be which activities matter. Um, I'm super focused on the acquisition side as you know, sales trainer focused in acquisitions. Um, and so I really look at like six main metrics in every business as I come in. And as soon as I can come in and diagnose what's going on, we can almost always help people do more deals, right? And so it starts with just how many leads are you getting in? You got to track gross leads because if you just don't have enough leads to play with, yeah. you're not going to be able to do Which much. Most land investors probably have a lead problem. Oh yeah. Like I would say if you're a few years in, that advice probably doesn't apply. But Agreed. year one, year two, it's almost always a Lead problem. Almost always Bro, you got five leads this month. Yeah, you can't run a business in five leads. It's just not true. I found that about 50 leads a month is the tipping point where you have a semblance of a business. That's good. It might not be wildly profitable or super consistent. But like one to three deals a month. You're good. Yeah. Like you've got something. You Agreed. Know? And so if you're not there yet, what are you worried about? But let's talk about the rest of the input. No, absolutely. So you have your gross leads, and then it's like your net leads, which I always say are the leads you can do business with. Mm -hmm. Whether that's getting on the phone with them, which your outreach better be super aggressive, <laughs> right? Double dialing them, triple dialing them aggressive for a couple of days. Um, and then it's a property you want to do business with. So if you didn't do a good job of scrubbing on the front end with Land Insights, how are you making sure that you know the leads that come into your desk um, are de deals you want to do, are properties you want to do business with, right? Um, and then on the other side, right? So you have uh, your gross leads, your net leads. How many offers are you actually making? So many of us see an asking price and we're like, oh man, they want market value. I'm not going to make an offer. And it's like, dude, you're just throwing money down the door. Yeah, you know? yeah. uh, from that, how many verbal acceptances are you getting sellers that tell you yes that's not yeah go ahead and send me an offer that's not I'm gonna think about it that's yes mm -hmm. right how many are you getting actual verbals on from that how many contracts are you getting signed huge gap with a lot of investors between verbals and signed contracts and then of those how many deals do you actually do yeah. because you're always gonna get some level of falling out whether it's title issues something goes wrong you miss something in due diligence your comps are a little wonky right so I usually see about a 30% loss yeah. in between those yeah. two sometimes a little more sometimes a little yeah. less just depending on your model but um, those are the six main metrics that I focus on. 